if you are actively trading in 2022, I'm pretty sure hedging or protecting your portfolio from these crazy markets must be at the top of your mind. So before I start uh, going into detail about uh, hedging, I just want to mention that there are two types of traders. Number one is a directional trader or uh, you know, you call them trend followers or trend traders. And these people, what they do is they use technical analysis or technical indicators to gauge market direction and, and they just follow the trend. And uh, you, you must have heard of a popular saying, the trend is your friend. So that's how the directional traders uh, make their money. Then if you're doing options, you will uh, come across certain people who call themselves delta neutral traders. And all these people are doing is with options, you can take opposite trades to manage your delta exposure. Delta is basically exposure to price movement. So let's say you are bullish on five stocks and the market starts going into a correction. Now you'll start losing money on all those five stocks. So what the delta neutral traders do is if they take five bullish trades, they'll somehow try to neutralize their deltas or the exposure to market direction by taking some kind of a trade, um, whether it's pair trading or some kind of a trade on an equity which moves opposite to the market. So in a way they're hedging their trades so that their directional exposure is not that big. I am personally a directional trader and you know there are many ways of generating wealth in the stock market and as long as it works for you there is really no right or wrong way of doing things but you can always have an opinion and I have an opinion too so I'll just go through some quick um, points about why I don't like delta neutral trading so at first Delta neutral trading sounds really great because you know you you have this concept that you know if the market goes against you, you will not blow up or you will not have big losses in your account. It sounds great. But the problem with delta neutral trading is you are always hedging your positions. So when you have some winners, you will have um, losers which you had added as hedges. So because of this, the, the returns in your portfolio are really small. And yes, if you do it right, they will add up over time and you will definitely beat the markets or any uh, financial advisor or mutual fund. But uh, you will not find um, any Delta neutral trader claiming more than um, 20 to 50% annualized returns. So does that mean directional trading is better? Well, there is no right or wrong answer. It all depends on your risk tolerance. Like, do you want to make a lot of money, but sit with the feeling all the time that you are exposed to the market? So if the market goes against you, you can end up with heavy losses. So that's the downside of directional trading. I'm a directional trader, so I'm definitely biased towards this kind of trading, but I will show you a few things uh, about this style of trading that I really like. If you have read my book on Amazon, which is titled Mean Reversion Trading Using Options, you will notice that I use a really simple uh, option trading structure called a vertical spread. Um, so I buy something called a ATM or add the money debit spread and 
all I need is a $5 movement in the underlying for me to, to double my money. And sometimes uh, if you buy, if you trade highly liquid stocks or ETFs like QQQ, SPY, all that stuff, uh, you need a dollar movement in the underlying and you can still double your money. So that's the beauty of that the trading structure I use. Uh, I like to keep my trading life very simple so there is no need to unnecessarily engage in complicated structures out there. So this works for me so that's what I use. And uh, like I was pointing out earlier, if you can identify a trend and get on the trend, typically a trend will last from two to 10 weeks. But let's say even if you're able to catch the trend right in the middle because you know nobody can catch tops and bottoms. So a trend got started, you were observing the markets and you identified, okay, we are heading up and you jumped in right in the middle, you can still catch a healthy six weeks of a trending market. And if you deploy this kind of trade structure, you can generate a really good return in just six short weeks. And just to give you an example, let's say you are trading with a $25,000 account and are risking 30% of it, which is what I do. So that would mean you are risking $7,500. Now, since my trades last 30 days, I usually divide my allocation across four weeks of that $7,500. And even if you have a 70% win rate, this equates to $10,000 in profit. That's a 40% ROI in six weeks. And now you compare this to the 40% ROI that a Delta neutral trader was happy about in a year. So that's the difference between directional trading and Delta neutral trading. Delta neutral trading is a safer form of doing things, but it comes with its own shortcoming, which is hardly any return on the money that you're risking. Directional trading, on the other hand, can generate outsized returns and you're betting on a direction. And if that direction doesn't turn out uh, right, then you stand the chance of losing it all. And that's, again, coming back to the topic, that's what we are discussing here. When that direction goes against you, how can you avoid losing all your money? So how can you be in a state where if you identify a trend and the trend and you were right, you make a lot of money. But if you are wrong, you can simply hedge your trades and just protect your portfolio. You don't have to make money in every situation. I use this uh, tool that I have developed called the Spread Tracker to keep an eye on all my trades. And I'll just quickly walk you through how it looks like because it's really simple. It's a Google Sheets based document. And all, you can see that uh, on the left side, where it says symbol, spread type, long strike, short strike. So uh, you have these four columns and then you have expirations, expiry 11.4, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 18, 11, 25, and so on. And it shows you how many days you have left for each expiration. And then it just has a bunch of trades that I have opened for each expiration. So I enter my trades here, whether it's, a, uh, you know, since I do debit spreads, either I do bull call spreads or bear put spreads. So depending on the trade, I've entered the trade here, my strikes, and based on uh, some simple rules, it's able to predict uh, whether my trades are going to become uh, winners, losers, or you know they are in the money, out of the money. That's the outlook column. And then uh, since my whole trading system is a rules-based system, based on the rules, it also suggests what action I need to take for these trades. So it's really easy for me to glance at this every morning, in fact, two or three times a day and just you know, keep an eye on uh, what's happening to my trade. So with my trading, it's really simple. So uh, I try to make money when markets are trending. And usually I prefer uh, taking trades when there is an uptrend. 
uh, although you can always make money when there is a downtrend, but um, the, what you will notice is when markets are trending up, when VIX is low, um, markets move in a very slow and methodical fashion. So they will keep going up, then there'll be small pullbacks along the way, and then they resume their uptrend. It's a slow and easily observable uh, pattern in which the markets move. And because of that, you can plan your trades ahead of time. Whereas if you talk about making money on the downside, like when I mean, there are bear markets, it's actually pretty hard. And the reason for that is you must have heard uh, of this saying, bulls take the stairs up and bears take the elevator down. And what that means is when the markets are going up, they are they go up in a timely slow fashion and when markets are going down you will see sudden knee-jerk reactions where you will wake up one morning and the dow jones is showing a drop of 500 points just in the pre-market so that's how quick the markets drop and then because of that it's very hard to plan your trades because you know you have to uh, make panic-based decisions uh, uh, based on knee-jerk reactions in the market. So I don't like uh, trade uh, trying to make money on the downside. Uh, when markets are falling, I do take hedge trades, which is what I'll, ta I'll talk about. So if I have taken some bullish trades and markets are showing a deep red open, I will hedge my trade so that I don't lose any money. Uh, but I don't try to make money when markets are correcting or in a downtrend. Let's get back to the spread tracker. So what you will find me doing is that whether we're in an up, uptrending market or we are in a market crash, markets don't go up or down in a line, right? So if it's a bull market, no problem. You know, I'll I'll take trades on pullbacks and that because pullbacks uh, give you some really good trading opportunities. Uh, you know, the buy the dip gang. So that works when you're in a bull market. When you're in a bear market, what will happen is, um, even in a bear market, you will have something called a relief rally. Markets have this tendency to um, overshoot either up or down in both directions. So when they overshoot in any direction, they kind of uh, revert back to the mean, and which is my whole concept of trading it's a mean reversion. So I'm betting on any kind of overextension to resolve itself and snap back to the mean. So even when markets are dropping, you will see an extended downwards move, which will be followed by a relief rally. And these relief rallies can last anywhere from um, two to eight weeks easily. So when I see relief rallies, that's the time I start taking uh, bull call spreads uh, or debit spreads, call debit spreads. And so if you look at this expiration, expiry 11.4. So what must have happened um, with me on this expiry is when markets were showing some kind of an uptrend, I would have taken one, two, three, four, these call spreads. So Costco, Adobe, Ulta, and FedEx. So as long as the stock expires above this price, I will double my money on each of these trades. And in this case, if you notice, I have made most of my money with, with all these trades. Uh, FedEx is the only one which is not clear yet, but uh, all these three are actually winners. So usually my trades are 30 days out. So I take uh, I take trades with, 30 days to expiration and by usually by day 10 you have a pretty good idea if the trade is going to work out in your favor if the stock goes in your direction it goes deep in the money and uh, there is hardly any chance of it um, turning into a loser now when day 15 comes around which means half of your trades window is gone and day 15 is here and your for some reason your spread is not in the money 
like deep in the money, which means it's not showing any clear signs whether it's going to be a winner or a loser. And in this case, the best example is like FDX. So all these are projected winners. Two of them have closed. This is just languishing. You know, the stock price is stock price is 158. My spread is 155. I bought a 155 call and sold a 160 call. So this price is right in the middle of this range. So I don't know whether this trade will become a winner or loser. Now, when day 15 comes around, and for whatever reason, uh, markets show a deep red open, the futures market show a deep red open, it could be anything. It may be um, Putin did something in Ukraine, you know, uh, or maybe something happened in South Korea. So if something happens, some macroeconomic event happens and you see in the morning, in the pre-market, the futures are indicating a deep red open, that is the time when you need to hedge your trades. So now hedging is a very uh, slow and deliberate process. So just because markets are showing a deep red open doesn't mean that you markets will continue to fall. So what you need to do is you need to look at your trades and whichever trade was not showing clear direction, whether it's becoming a winner or loser, in this case, FedEx, you would take one bear put spread corresponding to this trade. So the goal is that, you know, if FedEx loses the corresponding bear put spread win, so in this case, Airbnb is actually a winner, so that would cancel out that loser. So that's the goal. So the goal is to come to a point where you have equal amount of bear put spread and bull call spread, so they will cancel each other out because you can only lose money in one direction. So either the market will go up or down and one of the trades, either the, the bearish trade or the bullish trade will become winner and can, which will cancel out your other losers. Every Anytime you see a the 15 day mark and a trade not showing clear direction of becoming a winner or loser, that is the time when you'll take one bear put spread to hedge that trade which is in danger. So that's the process I follow. And in, if you look at this example, I have taken three trades um, to hedge against my bullish trades. And what happened after this is that, you know, I, I think this was a correction coming to an end. And I started seeing a rally, markets start change direction. So then I would just switch to my normal trade. So for these expirations, 11, 11, 18, 25, I just took all call spreads. And today, as of recording this video, um, it was the FOMC announcement. So all these trades were showing as 100% winners. And markets would, were just rocked by the Fed announcement. And I was forced to take some bear put spreads to hedge my positions, and which has actually turned out pretty good so far. But if you just go back one or two days um, earlier, you would just see all call spreads. There were no hedge trades because there was no reason for me to take any hedge trades um, because all my call spreads were showing as projected winners. I hope uh, this video gave you some insight on the hedging techniques that I use in my day-to-day uh, -day trading. And in my opinion, having um, some kind of a hedging strategy in your trading plan uh, goes a long way in weathering the conditions that we have experienced in the year 2022.